Hi, I'm Mark Murrow. Today we're going to be learning the Essential Knowledge 4.8.1, the subcomponents of biological molecules, and their sequence determines the properties of that molecule. In AP Biology, we learn about the four macromolecules that are needed for life. We have glucose and fructose, which are carbohydrates. These are the building blocks of major carbohydrates like starch and glycogen. We have DNA or nucleic acids. We also have proteins, which are uh, used in this experiment as enzymes. Um, and we also have lipids, which make up our cell membranes for the outside of the cell and the nucleus and all these other organelles that you see here. So biological molecules are the major components of life. They're made up of things called monomers. Monomers are the smaller subunits of these biological molecules. So when we have something like a nucleic acid, these are going to be the smaller pieces that make up nucleic acids, and these are called nucleotides. So if you chain a bunch of these together, you get nucleic acids. The amino acids make up proteins, and the different amino acids have different R groups. So if you chain a bunch of amino acids together, you make up a protein. Lipids really don't have a monomer, so we just kind of leave that one out. The carbohydrates, you have a sugar called a monosaccharide, and that goes into building a carbohydrate. And based on the different type of bondings, you can get different types of carbohydrates. And you can get monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides, which mean many. So when we have these major four biological molecules that you have to memorize, they're made up of monomers. So how do we build these polymers from the monomers? We have to go through something called a dehydration synthesis, a uh, dehydration reaction, where we take a single two monomers and combine them chemically in a covalent bond to become one chain, or in this case, a, an amino acid. So if we had three of these, it would be called a polymer. Um, so there's a peptide bond between amino acids uh, and what we do is we take this carbon and this nitrogen and we make them come together with the peptide bond. So we take these molecules right here and if you look at this it's an oxygen and two hydrogens and we can take that, take the water out so the dehydration, think of being dehydrated, you're taking water out of your body, and you get the water as a product in this reaction to bring these two amino acids together. And so if you do this a bunch of times, you get a polymer, and you can get something as complex as an enzyme. Well, enzymes in themselves can actually break these uh, products apart. And so the opposite of a dehydration synthesis is hydrolysis. And in this case, we are taking that peptide bond and breaking it, adding water. So hydro, so think of hydration, and we are breaking this bond here in this peptide bond by adding water. So this, this process is reversible, which is really cool and really good for our system. So when I eat some steak, which I love very much, this steak uh, needs to get broken down. And so all of the proteins that are inside the steak need to be broken down in some way. And so the enzymes will do that through hydrolysis. Nucleic acids are very important. We have uh, two important ones that are called DNA and RNA. And they are made up of nucleotides which these nitrogenous bases right here are the most important components of nucleic acids which hold all of the information. So we have uh, C for cytosine, G for guanine, A for adenine, and T for thymine in DNA. So 
when we are using DNA, when we are looking at DNA, we're looking at C's, G's, A's, and T's. When we're looking at RNA, we are looking at the same types of nitrogenous bases and we have C, D, A, and instead of T, we have U for uracil. The, uh, the nucleotides are the important building blocks or the monomers of nucleic acids. And when we look at them, we're looking at the nitrogenous base, which can be cytosine, guanine, adenine and thymine, or uracil if we're talking about RNA. A sugar, for DNA it's deoxyribose, and if it's RNA we're looking at ribose. And the deoxy stands for, in DNA, stands for deoxygenated. And then we're looking at a phosphate group. Now the way that these are held together and linked together is that we're looking at a five prime carbon to the phosphate linking up with the phosphate to a three carbon in the sugar. So this would be one carbon, two carbons, three carbons. So we name that the three prime carbon. This would be four and five. So we have a five carbon and a three carbon sugar. Now when these phosphates link up to the next three prime carbon, they make a chain. And so each molecule will start at a three prime. And then if we follow this one up, all the way up, this would be our five prime. And the, they're anti-parallel, which means that they go together but this side is going to start off with a 5 prime and then if we follow this one up this would be a 3 prime end and the RNA since it only has one uh, it's going to be made up of a 5 prime as well and a 3 prime and that can be in any direction depending on the way you're looking at it now this uh, blue ribbon here is kind of interesting but it's made up of a sugar and a phosphate and a sugar and a phosphate and so if you follow this all the way down this sugar and phosphate right here make up the backbone which is important the backbone is made up of a sugar and a phosphate on the RNA and DNA nucleic acids hold the meaning of life which make them very important they hold all of the information to build any organism, including a cell, you, and me. Proteins are my favorite. We have the basic building block is an amino acid, and so we have an amino group with the nitrogen right here, the carboxyl group, which is, has a double bonded oxygen and a oxygen that is polarized, ready to um, have a hydrogen there and create a polymer and we have the hydrogen group on the center carbon and an R group which can be different in every protein so we have these different types of proteins that have these different chains of components that can be used to make up proteins so we have different ones that are um, polarized, non-polarized, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, depending on which one we need into which section you can replace these with each R group. So we have 20 amino acids and those make up just about everything in your body. Lipids are another important macromolecule and these really don't have any monomers but if there was one we'd call that a fatty acid and a fatty acid is basically just a chain of carbon and hydrogen uh, with a carboxyl group at the end and so they can be in straight lines which we would call saturated or unsaturated 
um, are kind of in kinks and so they're called saturated because each carbon is filled with a hydrogen each bond is filled with a hydrogen and we call this unsaturated because the all not all of the bonds are completely filled with hydrogens so right here we have this double bonded carbon which doesn't allow for two other hydrogens to be bonded to that carbon which gives it this kink if you're looking at it in the 3D model so and we have triglycerides so if you see here we have one two three fatty acids attached to a glycerol and this is usually the fat that we see uh, we have lots of cholesterol which are made up in two rings and we have a phospholipid so this one's really important because this makes up our um, the plasma membrane and nuclear membrane and pretty much all of the membranes that you see on an organelle and a phospholipid has a hydrophobic end because this does not or react with water well and we have a hydrophilic meaning water loving and this section right here allows uh, Vikes water and this section doesn't so this is hydrophobic and a hydrophilic uh, ends of a phospholipid the last macromolecule that we have is a carbohydrate so these you find a lot in breads and grains uh, this is basically a sugar and so when we're looking at a carbohydrate you can put these in many different forms uh, this is a really complex model but if you see here there is a ring and so this carbohydrates usually in a ring but it can also be in a chain and when you look at it either way you're going to see that there are um, bonds to each carbon in a different way so these are actually pointing upwards uh, seeing as how this thing is going up if you look this 3D and these are pointing downwards so if you look at the way that this is made this one looks really similar to this one and so glucose alpha and glucose beta are shaped very similar except for the flipping of the OH and hydrogen and when that happens we have a different type of sugar so mostly all the sugar that we get are uh, the glucose alpha and not a lot of glucose beta if we link a bunch of these together so in a chain with dehydration synthesis we can get these molecules to form up in a chain so this is amylose which is a starch that comes from these grains right here and they're linked in a chain um, you know usually a couple hundred or uh, couple hundred sugars long now if we have something called glycogen which is made from animals so we have amylose from plants starch and glycogen from animals these are made up of chains of carbohydrates which kind of branch so here if you look we have a glucose glucose and then it branches into two different glucose molecules and it branches right here again and right here at the end as well usually these are surrounded by a protein in the middle and this is made from animals and the starch is made from plants thank you for watching Moreau knows now you do